Hey everyone, um, so yeah, today is going to be an official introduction to assembly language and you will be learning the whole, um, well, you went through the uh, composition of how the machines look, I mean the architecture and all of those. So um, from today onwards, you will be seeing how that works for um, x86, x86-64. So um, from today's class, you will be learning how to work with this, like um, how to convert your C code into an assembly code and how they um, like work in machine level. Like you'll be seeing a very, very um, primitive level of like um, assembly today. And I, it's kind of like a basic, like um, what sort of um, assembly stuff you're supposed to expect from a code and it will get a bit advanced um, later on. But today is basically like an introduction to how it looks like and like what each registers do and stuff like that. So yeah, um, let's get started. So um, the examples that we will be seeing from now on are taken from multiple resources. These are the resources. You can go there and take a look if you want. Um, it's up to you. Like um, you can test the course by yourself to get a better understanding. And when you do binary mom, you will have a very good understanding of like how assembly codes work and stuff like that. And the uh, um, C codes that are compiled here are GCC um, 4.83 on CentOS 7. Um, this is important because it changes based on which um, OS you are using. It will be different in Windows. It will be different in um, Ubuntu. So we are specifying that it's going to be CentOS 7. So uh, if you don't have your virtual box, you can try it in your R login. So um, that's up to you. The GCC 4.83 is a very recent version, so you should be fine with it. I think GCC uh, 4.8.3 is the recent version. Again, it's the version our login uses. So if you wanna try this stuff up, um, you can just log into our login. So um, to see your um, assembly code, this will be the command for your code, okay? So um, GCC, like always, minus S actually specifies that I want the assembly version of it, not the executable. M64 basically means that I want to um, uh, compile them into 64-bit. These are some compiler-specific commands which you won't be needing to know much about. You just write it down like this, okay? This means how much optimized the codes are. This is the um, best optimized version or the worst. I am not sure. Um, I will check later. Like it will come up in the later um, slides. So for now, it can go from 0, 0, 0, 1. Sorry, um, it's a O, O2 and O3. Uh, if I remember correctly, um, 0 means the least optimized and 3 means the most optimized and this will be your file name. So this is how you will be compiling the code um, to see the assembly version of it and we will be using at and assembly syntax and not the Intel syntax because GCC uses that. Okay, so yeah, uh, let's move on. So this is how a normal um, organized like um, compiler process looks like. So I went through this in one of the class, if you can recall. So um, what compiler does is first it's a C program, like in the uh, C code you have written, this is your source code. After you do GCC minus S, you specify that it's going to be um, uh, minus S, then it's going to turn into a assembly program where p1c and p1 p2c are converted into dot s which means assembly okay and this will also be a text file you can read it then after you use assembler you can use gcc or as it will be turned into a binary file an object file the object files we usually give you 
um, they are basically binary files you cannot actually read them and after you use linker in this case you can use gcc or ld and it will be turned into an executable program you will learn soon why um, linkers are important but the idea is uh, many of the functions are from um, external sources so what linker does is it puts them together in a single um, executable file which then um, runs based on how you want it to run that one is also a binary file so yeah you can read these two formats and you cannot actually read these two formats so yeah hmm i think that kind of covers it so yeah uh, this is the 32 bit version like x86 32 version so in this 32 version we have for um, six general purpose registers eax ecx edx and ebx we have esi and edi esi means source index and edi means destination index you will learn more about them soon enough esp is stack pointer and ebp is base pointer okay so these are the registers we have registers remember these are registers these are not part of your ram these are part of your um cpu like whichever register they are using this is what mm, like the format of register looks like so um yeah these six are general purpose and these are special purpose because you will be using this to work with your stack and you will see soon enough that the stacks are pretty important for um, keeping variables and like um, keeping like return address and all of those stuff so yeah this is the 32 bit version and um, for backward compatibility we have some virtual registers for the virtual registers um, in EAX we have AX okay uh, it's a backward compatibility with 16 bit because like uh, whenever you upgrade your system you cannot just like throw away previous versions like on 32 bit or like um, 16 bit because you still need those otherwise many of the P uh, pc would have to be like many of the programs have to be written from scratch like uh, for the newer version but like uh, one thing you will learn in cs that you should not reinvent the wheel so in this case we should have some sort of like backward compatibility or um, backward support um, so in this case uh, we have support for the 16 bit and that's why we have like a backward version of ax cx dx bx so these registers are actually um if i remember correctly they are four byte each okay four byte basically means four into eight 32 bit and that's why it's called 32 bit um like 32 bit uh, systems right but uh for backward compatibility ax is going to be 16 bit or two bytes these are one byte each so um ax has two version ah and al ah means a high al means a low cx has the same thing dx has the same thing bh has the same thing and this can be used as a backward compatibility to um, 8 bit and you can't you cannot go lower than that because this is what equals to a byte right you cannot go beyond that so um yeah um even for 16 bit they had si and di because they are important and they also had sp and bp but uh, as you can notice they are two bytes not four um like in 32 bit okay so yeah this is what 32 bit looks like okay uh, I kind of uh, wrote over the whole thing so it's kind of a mess so um, AL use is used as accumulate C is used for counter D 
D is used for data, B is used for base. Slap like now, I wanted to do that. <coughs> anyway, so um, SI. SI is source index, like I mentioned over here. DI means um, destination index, again mentioned. SI, um, SP means stack pointer, base means, um, sorry, uh, BP means base pointer, okay? So these are why it's used. So as you can see from A accumulate, it's usually used for ALUs. D is also used with it. C is usually used for counters. Like whenever you're using like for loop or something like that and you are doing an increment for I++, um, that's when the C is going to be used. And B is usually used for some sort of base or something like that. Source and destinations are usually used for um, addresses and stuff, stuff like that. Again, you will see you will be seeing them throughout this whole course. Okay, so I hope um, this thirty-two bit version makes sense to you. So now we are going to go to the sixty-four bit. So as you can see, like uh, if you look at the previous one, we had EAX, ECX, EDX, EBX. So this E basically means extend. Okay, so they are extension for AX, CX, DX, and stuff like that. But now we have RAX, <coughs> and each of the registers now are 64 bit or 8 bytes. So as you can see, they are even bigger now. Okay, so now we have RAX, RBX, RCX, RDX, RSI, RDI, RSP, RBP, just like before. And now we have a virtual 32 bit as you can see it's just like before they used to be used to exist before right we have new registers now these registers are r8 r9 r10 r11 r12 r13 r14 r15 and they do not need any version of like virtual um, 32 bit these are so that they can be used but nobody actually uses that as a virtual and like um virtual 32 bit because in the 32 bit version they didn't exist in the first place right so um as you can see the previous version is intact over here and now we have even more space to work with and whenever a register gets bigger that's when we change the whole architecture right so um extend existing like uh, we have already like we are already extending the existing registers and we are adding like um, eight new more <clears throat> and now ebp and rbp became um general purpose like sorry ebp became general purpose like this it used to be a special purpose over here but now it's a general purpose okay so that's basically the uh, difference between a 64 bit and a 32 bit and 64 bit is basically an extension to 32 bit and you can still use your 32 bit um, programs in your 64 bit the reason is this these virtual registers and that's why <coughs> in your um, programs you can like switch between them like back and forth i hope that makes sense so um, some of the nomenclatures we are going to um, nomenclature or we are going to uh, focus on. Um, usually we will be working with long, which is 32-bit integers and 64-bit float. But there are other stuff as well. Like uh, if it has a B or byte, it's going to be 8 bits. If it's short, it's going to be 64-bit integer and 32-bit float. If it's a word, it's going to be a 64 a 16 bit value quad is going to be a 64 bit integers so usually we'll be working with some um like commands like move l or like movl that will basically means we are going to move 32 bit integer or 64 bit float we will also see something like a uh, move q which basically means we are going to work with 64-bit integer at that time, okay? So, um, yeah, like, we, like I said, we'll be restricting the uh, examples to long values. And even in the exam, you don't have to worry about too much about it because it will usually be long. 
So it's going to be just like 32 bit uh, integers and 64 bit float. Okay. So um, this is an example of a um, assembly code. So this is what the C code looks like. It has a int main, it returns zero. It has three variables, x, y, and t. x is five, y is 16, and t is going to be x, x plus y. Very simple one. And if you want to turn it into an assembly, you run this command, gcc minus o0 minus s minus wall minus 64, M64 basically you're telling that you're going to you're going to be using the 64 uh, bit registers and this is the name of the file you can give it a try and I highly recommend that you give it a try and take a look at the assembly code yourself uh, it will give you better understanding I could do that the same thing right now it will look exactly like this but the idea is like I don't want to uh, like switch back and forth between codes and like slides so I am not going to show you that, but trust me, this is exactly what it's going to look like. You can give it a try. You should give it a try, okay? So um, at first, this part is kind of like a metadata. It keeps track of like um, the information of the file, like what's the name of the file? What type of uh, file is it? Uh, like, where are you right now? What functions are there? Uh, and later on, you will also see what sort of strings are used, okay? This is what the main looks like. This is called a label and you'll see why labels are needed. And then you see, you see something like push Q. With this Q, you know that it's a quad. If we look at the previous slide, we see that if it ends with Q, it's a quad. So it's taking care of a 64-bit integer. This one is also a Q. This one is also a Q. So um, they are working with quad, okay? So first we are going to push a RBP in the stack. Whenever we are using push, it's always a stack, okay? I'm just going to give you an overview of the code, like what is happening or something like that, but it will not make sense yet. Um, but by the end of this lecture, you will have better understanding of how this code works, okay? So um, first I'm going to push the base pointer in the um, stack. Then I'm going to move the current RSP to RBP. So I'm basically replacing this RBP with the RSP. Then I'm going to subtract 16 from the RSP. Why 16? Because we will be using three variables. So Okay, I'll explain it later, okay? Anyway, so this is L, and if you saw before, we are going to use L for long. So this one works with, a, um, as you can see, 32-bit or 64-bit float, okay? So um, first, we are moving five and putting it into RBP minus four. We are doing another move, and we are putting 16, to RBP minus eight. Then we are moving RBP minus eight, which was this, to EAX, and uh, minus four, which was this, into EDX. So basically in the EAX register, we are putting the value of 16. And in the EDX register, we are putting the value of five. And from the look of it, you can guess that this part is basically doing this part, right? And then we are going to do a add of edx plus eax. So eax plus edx. So basically this line is being executed over here. Sorry, wrong, over here. Then we are going to put the value of eax, which is the answer of the sum and put it here, which is another um, like uh, stack. We're going to like put it in the stack. Then we're going to move zero to EAX. Basically, we're clearing this EAX. Then we're just going to return, okay? 
and again more um, metadata so this is the main part of your assembly code and this is just an overview i will be explaining them one by one like why it happened what happened and stuff like that so this is a simple simple layout of your memory so um, local variables and function parameters are stored in memory and organized in a stack frame so i keep talking about like rbp and rsp they are basically using the stack frame and if you can recall from one of the classes we had something called stack smashed that's because i kind of um like messed up this whole format of the stack and that's why that happened so now it will make sense like why that happened okay so to work with the stack we use two registers one of them is rsp and one of them is rbp for rsp address of the top element of the stack so rsp takes care of like where the stack starts or ends however you want to see it and rbp is address of the first element of the current stack so rsp is basically the um endpoint okay you cannot go beyond the rsp basically did i did i get that wrong hmm, can I look? yeah i said that wrong so um rsp is basically the top element of the stack stack like um where uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain soon so yeah RSP is the top element of the stack like uh, think of it as this is where it's starting okay and RBP is keeping track of where it is right now so um, what we're doing here is like remember at the beginning we did something like um, push queue RBP so we are basically keeping track of our return address over here RBP usually keeps track of like where it is right now so by doing this we are uh, keeping track of like where rbp should go back to after it's done okay then we did something like rbp minus 4 over here rbp minus 4 and we put the value of 5 so the value of x is going to be stored in rbp minus 4 rbp minus 8 stores y rbp minus 12 which we saw over here keeps the answer of the value so it is going to be t okay so yeah this is the uh, simple example of the memory layout and another thing to notice over here is the address increases as it goes up so when we did something like um, rsp minus 16 which was over here by doing that we went down okay so um and over here whenever we do rbp rbp is pointing here so rbp minus 4 is going to go down and if it was like something like rbp plus 4 it's going to go up that's why uh increasing the address like um address increases at, as you go up this is going to be rbp plus 4 I hope that makes sense so um, a few more things so register memory data transfer many machine level operations require that data require that data be transferred between memory and registers the most basic instruction for this are variants of move instruction so if we use move l source destination so the first one is going to be a source the second one is going to be destination and this is the equivalent code okay and we are using the variant of move l so basically we are working with 32-bit integer and 64-bit float so like i said this copies 32-bit value from source into destination move q moves 16 for 64-bit values in the same fashion despite the name it has no effect on the value of source nothing is going to happen to source because like um whenever we use a word move it's basically like um cut in windows right 
like in that case it just like um takes the source and puts it to destination and it removes the stuff from source in this case that's not the case okay so whenever you are moving uh, something to the destination their value are going to be the same so the two uh, operands can be specified in number of ways there can be immediate values uh, one of the 60 like uh, it can be one of the 16 um, registers that i've shown you in the previous slide it can be a memory address okay so here's an example of how they can look like so for example um, constant integer data like you can use literally constants like this this is a hexadecimal and this is an actual integer like c constants but um, they are prefixed with dollar sign if they have a dollar sign they are basically constant numbers okay and it's encoded with like one two or four bytes um, based on like which move you are using like you can use move l or move q it based on that it's encoded with that many bytes okay it can be a register one of the 16 uh, integer registers that you have seen before like eax edx you'll be mostly using these and uh, registers always proceed with percent sign so if it has a percent sign um, you can actually um, use them for move and stuff like that so rsp and rbp are reserved for special use as you have seen they are reserved for the stack okay others have special uses for particular instructions um yeah each of the registers have their own version of like work they can do but like um usually you don't have to worry about it you can actually use whichever you want but be careful whenever you're using rsp and rbp because these are very sensitive you can also use a memory um, address like in consecutive bytes of memory at address given by the register n is specified by the instruction name move l okay so if it's a move l it's going to be a memory location with four bytes if it's move q it's going to be memory location with eight bytes so this is an example so if i write something like is going to go back to the register and see what value it has stored so it can be something like ox like this and then it's going to go to that memory location and fetch the data okay so it's kind of like a pointer whenever you are using a uh, memory address you're basically using it as a pointer so whenever you are working with pointers and in assembly version you will see that you are using a memory address like this so yeah so um, these are some very basic examples uh, and you should have a good grasp of how this works because they are going to be in the exam okay so in this case we are going to map um, eax to a ebx to b ecx to c edx to d so let's see what's happening over here so we are going to move this constant value which is hexadecimal version of 10 and put it into eax so what we are doing over here is basically a equal to 16 because 10 equals to 16 in hexadecimal okay over here we're moving an integer 42 into ebx so it's basically b equal to 42 this is not a hexadecimal this one is because it has a ox at the beginning but they're the same like uh, you can interchange them if you want move l we are going to fetch the value that's inside ecx and put it in edx so basically d equal to c we are going to move eax the value that's inside eax and going to put it into rbx remember this is a memory address right so it's going to turn into a pointer because we are putting the value of eax inside the memory location that is pointed by rbx so it's going to go to the memory location that it points to and put the value of eax over there so that's why it's star b equal to a 
Over here, we are going to take the value that's inside RBX, like um, the memory location is pointing to, and get it and put it in EAX. So A equal to um, star B. And the last one, which is um, we are going to go to the memory location that is pointed by EBX and go down because minus four. It could have been just four. In that case, it would have been up. Okay and then put it into EAX. So A equals to star B minus four. Make sense? Um, I highly recommend that you get a good feel of what's happening in this slide. Like this is very, very important. If you don't understand, please post about it in Piazza so that we can give you a better understanding or show up in our office hours to um, get a better understanding of this because if you don't understand this, this whole assembly part of the course is going to be a one big nightmare. So um, let's see what's happening in the code one by one. I have already shown you um, before. Oops, I have already shown you like how things work so far. Yeah, I am. There you go. So yeah, um, remember the x equal to five is happening in the assembly version of this. We are basically putting five, a constant into RBP minus four, which is over here. So the value of x is going to exist here. We're going to do a move and put the value 16 over here and put it into RBP minus eight, which is over here. And then we are going to do t equal to x plus y. So first we are going to be using the register. Okay, so whenever you are using um, a, something like this, you can totally use this directly, but um, they are stacks. So you shouldn't be um, changing their value because whenever you are doing add, you are basically replacing this value. So you will be wanting to use some sort of register. So that's why these values are copied to a register first by doing move. And then we are doing add. We're adding EDX with EAX. And then we are going to move that answer, which is inside EAX and put it into minus 12 RBP, which is over here. So that's how um, these all values are like um, saved. So um, let's go then. Like I think it's just going to show you the whole thing one by one. Yes. So I already um, explained. Let's go then. I, I don't know why it was made it like this. Okay, I didn't make this um, slide, so I'm really sorry. So the first thing is going to happen is um, we are going to put the five in the stack. As you can see that value is stored here then we are going to take the next one the 16 we are going to move the 16 and put it in the stack which is over here and then we are going to do this part which is first we are going to um, take the variables and put them in registers we are going to as you can see we have put them into register and then we are going to do a um, add Whenever you're doing an add, what it's going to do is something like this. EAX equals EAX plus EDX. Okay. So um, this part is basically doing that. And as you can see, EAX is going to be replaced. So um, the value of EAX becomes 21. And in the next part over here, it's going to put it inside here. Okay. So like I said, this is what it looks like. Whenever you are doing an add, it's going to be left top equals left top plus right top. Okay, that's something you should know about because like whenever you're doing um, some sort of addition or subtraction or multipl multiplication, this is what's going to happen. So um, the operand ordering shows here is probably confusing. As usual, the destination is listed second, but that's also the first uh, operand when the arithmetic is performed 
this same pattern is followed for all binary integer arithmetic instructions. See the discussion of AT&T versus Intel syntax later in the notes for historical perspective on this. This is optional. Uh, it's not going to be in the exam, but like it's totally for you to have better understanding of assembly in general. Okay. So yeah, um, these are also some of the um, arithmetic instruction you can use like subtraction. In this case, it's going to be like this. Remember, it's always left up uh, equals left up minus right up. Okay. And as you can see, left up is going to be replaced. If you use IMOL, this part is going to be replaced by their multiplication. You can also use negative, in which case it's just like negates the number. You can use um, increment, which is basically like C++, and decrement, like uh, C minus my, sorry, C minus minus, and so on. So, yeah, that's it for this class. Um, it's a basically an introduction to how assembly works. It gives you the basic idea of which function, like which registers are used for what and stuff like that. Next time you will have uh, even more in depth of how assembly looks like. So yeah, if you have any confusions, any questions, anything about this whole lecture, please, um, write about it in the piazza or come to my office hour I will give you better explanation of why and what happened and um, yeah I think that's it for me uh, for this lecture I will see you in the next one bye bye